In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a contour nesting so you can hold a medical device in place. You have a device, whether it's this device or any other device, you want to hold it in place so you can move it from station to station to conduct testing, assembly, or inspection. How do you make this device, this holder? I'm going to show you in this video. Whenever you have a holder and you want to take it to different stations, we highly recommend using these one-touch knobs. When this engage, they allow you to move the holder to different stations. We then have a cleat to keep the cable in the groove. If you want to zoom in on that, there's the cleat to keep the cable in the groove. And then we have a contoured holder and pressure pad to hold the device in place. And this is primarily what we're going to focus on today. I'm going to show you the cab of exactly how we nested the medical device in here. First step is to have your medical device part, whatever that may be, it's probably going to look very different from this one. So this is our medical device that we're going to be working with. We want to save the assembly file. As you can see, this is an assembly file with numerous parts. We want to save the assembly file as a part file, but very carefully we need to prep the assembly file prior to saving as a part file by suppressing the bodies that do not make up the exterior of the part. What I mean by that, let's hide this handle and on the inside, you may see a motor and different components. These components are not on the outside of the part, therefore we don't need them. Make sure to suppress all the bodies that are in the interior that did not make up the exterior. Just to double check, you see, those inside bodies are not there anymore. Now we're ready to save the file. We're going to go to File, Save As, and we're going to save it as a part file. and all components, all right guys, all components. I wanna remember that name because I wanna look it up later, so I'm just gonna copy that, leave it on my clipboard, clipboard, save. It's not gonna open by itself, so we need to open the part file. And it was called, this was the name. no feature recognition. Next we want to make this an airtight surface. What we're going to do is we're going to select the biggest body and we're going to hide the rest. So we're going to isolate the biggest body which is the handle. We're going to select the tangent seat and we're going to convert all of these surfaces into another surface, a copy of the surface. Select tangent seat that I just showed you now is a really cool trick otherwise you'll be clicking around all day trying to select all the surfaces. So. Offset surface. You've seen this before in other tutorials. Zero makes a copy of it. All right, so now we have a copy. We're going to hide the body. And we should have our surface. We know it's a surface because it's this one. All right, with the surface, we're going to close all the gaps so we make it airtight. A tip that I have for you is whenever you have a circle, you make it you just delete the circle, delete hole, and it's really cool because it not only deletes it but it patches it and it knits all the surfaces around it. So that's what we want to do. We want to go through all the holes and uh, patch the surfaces. A couple of really cool tricks because you may have a much more complex part than this. So what you want to do is you want to use check under evaluate and you want to check for open surfaces. That checkbox, select the item, this one. So open surfaces and check. And it's going to show you arrows as to where the open surfaces are. These are clear, they're evident. There's an open surface there. But sometimes you can, you'll have little open surfaces. So something's happening here. And then there's going to be another one after another one. So that's one trick that you can utilize to identify what the open surfaces are and then you can fix them one at a time. And the other trick is to go to your settings, colors, and open edges. And usually this will be blue, so I changed it to pink. So you can clearly see it stand out and then you click OK. 
So see my open surfaces are pink if you look closely and that makes it a lot easier for me to identify. So some more troubleshooting. So sometimes the elite hole may not work, although this is a hole, clearly is a circular hole. It may not work. So what you do is you go to fill surfaces and this is a cool little trick. You click on it. Nope, not you. You right click on it and select open loop all that see how quick that was if you don't do that you'll be clicking around all day for all the surfaces so we're gonna fill that surface I finished patching all the surfaces but even then I saw a little bit of purple on the edges which we all know from before purple means open edges so it wasn't watertight I ran the check command to see if there were any open surfaces and that is the case there is a little gap between the filled surface and the big surface so what we're going to do is we're going to knit all the surfaces. Knit surface. All the surfaces that we made. We're going to merge them. I want to create a solid. And hopefully we don't have to use the, the knit command, the gap control. So let's go for it. And it worked. Congratulations, we've achieved the hardest workflow so far. So from here on out, this is going to be a lot easier. If you're still here, clearly you find this information of value. So go ahead and subscribe. Uh, if you don't subscribe, you're going to miss out on future content, guys. Okay, next step is to show another body. Let's do the trigger. We're going to show the body. We're still in isolate mode, as you can see. And we're going to convert these, these um, outer faces into surfaces. We're going to copy them. So we're going to do what I told you guys before. Select tangency. Look how much time you save there. Copy. Now we want to get rid of the lower portion of the trigger. This part that's on the inside. Let's do a cross section. Let me show you what I mean. So this external surface is out here. We want it to come right back around and all of this to be external surface. Therefore, we want to get rid of all these surfaces inside the medical device because we don't need them and to do that we're going to use the trim surfaces trim surface select mutual which surfaces the trigger and the other surfaces we want to keep the selections and the selections that we want to keep are I want to keep you and you and now what it's showing me this can be a little tricky so pay attention if you just hover your mouse show excluded surfaces so that's what we're going to get rid of yes that's correct check mark and like always let's verify that was the case all right it is now watertight as you can see the external surface goes down and right back up success we're gonna follow the same procedure for the tail back here now we're going to create a couple planes just so we can have an indication of how far our block will be and we really didn't need to do the trigger, but I did it as an example for this video so you guys can understand uh, more of the concepts. This is a lot more complex than the little tail at the back. But basically, I put this plane here and a plane in the back. That's the length of the block that I want to do. And we're going to do a multi-part modeling. So we're going to make another part inside a, par a part file. And I went ahead and made the block. Super easy. Here's the sketch from the top view. So I did that sketch, I extrude to the bottom, and I did not combine, yes, do not merge the result because you want two separate bodies. Now it's one of my favorite features is indent. So you come up here, this is what's going to give you that contour that you're looking for, indent, target body, block. You can see we're going to make that cut. We're going to give it 5,000 of clearance. There's a 5,000 spacing, the offset. Hide this body. And we have our contoured nesting. All right, guys, please like, comment, subscribe, share on social media if you find this of value. 
Uh, we wanted to let you know that here at testfixturesdesign.com, we specialize in making medical device test fixtures. So reach out to me if you have any questions or if your engineering team needs help making one of these fixtures. Until next time. Supporting medical device engineering teams who have either insufficient bandwidth or expertise internally, Pipeline develops custom turnkey fixtures and automated equipment to test, inspect, characterize, qualify, and assemble your devices.